Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking. You may recall that in a previous episode, I set out to transform this medicine cabinet from the mundane to the macabre. That episode was called Scaring Up Bathroom Mirrors. And while I did succeed in creating some elegantly macabre mirrors for my bathroom, I failed miserably at transforming this medicine cabinet. But like I said in that episode, failure is not the enemy. In fact, it provided me with an opportunity and a challenge to come up with a really great medicine cabinet design for the Lair of Voltaire. And I think I may have done that. But truth be told, most of my best ideas were born of failure. Do you have anything positive to contribute? Then shut up! In any case, I do believe I may have made good on my threat to create a great medicine cabinet design for the Lair of Voltaire. I hope you will agree. I call it the Apothecary Cabinet. Take a look. My journey started with buying a new medicine cabinet. After much searching, I found one at Ace Hardware. Unfortunately, the floor model was the last one they had, but the staff was kind enough to get it down off of the wall for me. Back at the lab, it was time to start the transformation. I was gonna paint this black, so my first move was to remove the doors and all of the hardware. I also removed the shelves, the hinges, the glass, and of course, the cabinet knobs. Next, I painted all of the wooden parts with Rust-Oleum Gloss Black Protective Enamel. And when it was done, it looked something like this. With a sandpaper block, I then began to sand away the paint, which gives it this old, weathered, and distressed appearance. Now it's starting to look like a creepy old antique cabinet. In the end, it looked like what you might call gothic shabby chic. Next, I measured the inside of the cabinet. I've got big plans for this part. I got myself a 1 8 inch thick piece of black foam core and cut it to the same dimensions as the inside of the cabinet. I placed it inside to make sure it fit, but this isn't going to be the backboard. I have something much more interesting in mind than just black foam core. Remember that bats and beasts fabric and wallpaper I designed for Spoonflower.com? Well, I bought a roll of the gray version for this project. I rolled it out, placed the foam core backing on top, and I cut the wallpaper down with plenty of bleed around the edges. Now, this is a peel and stick wallpaper, so I flipped it over, and I removed the paper backing to expose the glue. And then I placed my foam core backing back on and pressed it into the wallpaper. Then I cut down the sides, but I left the top and the bottom long so that I could pull them over the foam core and secure them in place. In order to create a pull tab, to make it easier to insert and remove the backing, I cut a piece of gaffer's tape and stuck it to the back of the board. Then I flipped it over and I made a small incision on either side of the tape and folded it over itself to form a tab. I also cut it down so it wouldn't be too long and noticeable. Now that looks much better already, and because of the pull tab, it's easy to change this motif anytime you like. I put the shelf back in and now my cabinet looks like this. It's definitely coming along. But I want to make it look like a metal turn of the century dental cabinet, so I'm going to try to make the doors look like brushed steel using silver rub and buff. I squeezed out some rub and buff, and with very, very little on the brush, I dry brushed the doors of the cabinet. Once they were dry, I drew a spiderweb motif with a silver sharpie in the upper corner of the doors. 
I think it adds a subtle touch of the macabre. In time, the doors looked like this. Next, I dry brushed the cabinet, but only the edges. I just want it to look like the black paint has rubbed off and the metal is showing through the high traffic areas, if you will. Now, for the windows and the doors, I had a very novel idea. Why not use x-rays? Now, x-rays are a sticky subject, so I do want to take a moment to speak with you about that. In different places, there are rules dictating when, how, or even if a doctor can dispose of x-rays. They're typically required to hold on to them for five years and sometimes longer. And when it does come time to throw them away, they can't just put them in the trash because of patient-doctor confidentiality. So they're required to shred them. But because they're environmentally unfriendly, they're typically not shredded by the doctor. They're typically shredded by companies that pick them up from doctors and shred them. And in exchange, they retrieve the traces of silver in the x-ray that are valuable to turn a profit. Now, it is perfectly legal for someone to sell their own x-rays or donate them to a school for educational purposes or even for a craft project like this one. But if you happen to find x-rays in a doctor's estate sale or in a flea market and it still has the patient's information, you're really morally obligated to destroy that part of the x-ray to preserve the privacy of the patient. So there are rules in place and then also each crafter has to ask themselves what their comfort level is in working with x-rays. I just thought you might like to know that. And now back to the tutorial. In order to get the best crop of the x-ray image, since you can't really see the image otherwise, you have to hold it up to a light to get the best positioning. Once I was happy with the placement, I marked the x-ray with a silver sharpie. And then I cut it down so it would fit perfectly in the window. I returned the glass back onto the door, and then I placed my trimmed x-ray on top. And finally, I screwed all of the hardware back in place, including the hinges, so I could reattach the doors. The x-rays don't look like much from the front, but you get quite a surprise when you open the door. Now that the doors were reattached, it was time to install the cabinet knob. This is the one that came with the original cabinet, but I think we can do better, don't you? I went to the Etsy page of Blue Bear Design New York City, a very talented artist working in metal. You may recall that I used these outstanding Ravenclaw hooks for a project in Gothic Homemaking Episode 10, Birds of a Feather. And I also used his delightful metal skull cabinet knobs on my coffin-shaped armoire project for Gothic Homemaking Episode 6, Wardrobe of the Damned Part 2. I felt that they were the perfect choice for this project, so I bought two more. And what do you think of this? Isn't this much better than what was there before? Now, I had a very curious idea about what to do with this corner, and to that end, I went to the Etsy page of Heather Glass Creator and purchased a set of these incredible spiderweb stained glass corners. When they arrived, I was blown away by how lovely they were. There was just one tiny problem. The rings they have for attaching them were in the wrong orientation for my project. But that was easily fixed, and now they're ready to attach. I put the spider web in place, and I marked where the screws needed to go with a silver sharpie. Then I laid the cabinet on its side and I drilled small guide holes for the screws, making sure not to screw through the shelf. I then placed the spider web and screwed it in place, making sure to use small enough screws to hold it in place but not go through the shelf.
And that was that. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Now, at this point, I could have called my project done, but... Everyone knows that when it comes to Gothic homemaking DIY projects, that I'm kind of like Rick James. No, I'm a habitual line stepper. <laughs> I only ever know I'm done with a project when I'm certain that I've gone a little bit too far. And so, there was one last detail I wanted to add to the apothecary cabinet. These are some plastic skulls I bought at an at-home store. They're hollow, so I decided to fill them with Loctite foam. I made a hole in the bottom of the skulls with an X-Acto knife, and then I filled them with Loctite. In about an hour, when they were totally cured, I snapped off the excess foam. I then grabbed some barbecue skewers and jammed them into each of the skulls. I took them outside and I painted them black with Krylon black lacquer spray paint. To match the cabinet, I gave them the old silver rub and buff dry brushing treatment. And in time, they looked like this. Finally, I placed a bead of hot glue in one of the recessed screw holes at the top of the cabinet and I glued an upside down screw into the recess. And then I simply screwed my skull into place. And this is the final result. And now here's my finished apothecary medicine cabinet. And this is what it looks like with the doors open. What do you think? Personally, I'm so happy with it. I really love it. It's a great addition to my Gothic bathroom that's in the works. And I cannot wait to show you what that looks like when it's finished. But it's incredible to think that this cabinet would have never been made if I hadn't failed in a previous episode. Mistakes are not the end. They are the beginning. Every mistake you make is an opportunity to learn and to grow and to do better in the future. You might say that making mistakes is sometimes the best medicine. Thanks for watching.